Donald Trump. Kellyanne Conway is here to react. Kellyanne, I thought it was Joe Biden with all the experience on foreign policy that was going to bring uh, peace and tranquility to the world. That's right. It's been the opposite, Brian. We have not had a lower rating since 1962 of Americans who feel that they are dissatisfied with the standing of the U.S. in the world. It's at 33% satisfied, 65% dissatisfied. Not since we had a different Democratic president bringing us to the brink of war. Um, had people been so dissatisfied. In February 2020, that same poll had it at 53% satisfied. That's a month before COVID hit. And of course, that included 48% of independents. That's now down to 34% among independents. Why does this matter, Brian? Because Joe Biden's inaction has consequences. And his inability to do the job has consequences. Uh, Putin is salivating. He wants Biden to continue to be the president. Let's not be fooled about Russia, 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 nonsense, the sequel, which will be as stupid and uh, unriveting as the original. He wants Joe Biden in there because bullies love to have weak people in office. And here we have in Joe Biden, a commander in chief who had, was eight years as vice president, used to be chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, and yet Americans are saying that we are less respected and more importantly, less safe in the world because he's there. Now we have Viktor Orban, who is personally offended by President Biden's comments the other day, saying that he's a dictator that hates democracy. He is a member of NATO. He did meet with President Trump, and now he has summoned the uh, the U.S. ambassador uh, for to get blistered uh, by the disrespect shown to to Hungary. That's really not a great tactical move, is it? It's not at all, but it's the effect of Trump derangement syndrome for which there are no therapeutics and no vaccine. It's because President Trump met with Orban uh, down in Palm Beach that Joe Biden's reaction to another world leader, co-member of NATO, is so off the mark. And it's just it's just so extreme, like every reaction to all things Trump. But it's dangerous. I mean, when people see who our vice president is, a heartbeat away from the presidency and definitely a half a heartbeat away from this president, if we're looking at him day by day, uh, it's fear. And I think that's why you're going to have many people saying the vote for Joe Biden, Brian, is a vote for Kamala Harris, and possibly for 12 years. It's a very scary prospect for many people. Uh, here's what Speaker Johnson said that he's assessed from President Biden when he met with him one-on-one. -on -one. I've spent a little bit of time with him, and I, I'm sad to tell you that I don't think he is. And the reason I'm sad is because we are projecting weakness on the world stage. All of our adversaries around the world can see and follow exactly what you and I and the American people are. We, we have a weak president, and that's why our enemies are acting so provocatively right now. This is not a game. It's really not a laughing matter. It's a dangerous situation, and this election in November can't get here soon enough. And Kellyanne, he doesn't think he's mentally fit, uh, but after the State of the Union, every Democrat believes he is. Where's the truth? The truth is that we know what we see, not what we're told. And Speaker Johnson reflects the will of the people. A vast majority of Americans agree with that assessment, that Joe Biden does not have the agility, ability, or acuity to do the most important job in the world. The NBC News poll last fall asked it pretty squarely. Find 11% of Americans said that. There's no problem at all to them with Joe Biden's uh, ability to do the job. That's physical, mental, and might even throw in your emotional. He just sounds like an angry old cuss most of the time, um, yelling at reporters, yelling about it, and calling the other world leaders dictators. And uh, look, I, I think this is why people are taking a more granular look at what President Trump has actually said he would do in places like Ukraine. He said he'd want them to make a deal, and if Putin's not willing to do that, then Ukraine will get more from us, more than they have from us. But you don't give the money first and ask questions third. And uh, he has made very clear, right. too, that he would try to come to an agreement. I mean, Putin, under Biden, Putin thinks gotcha. that the one-fifth of Ukraine that they've taken is Russia. Yeah. yeah. Dangerous times. Yeah, he's wrong about that. But the president has talked about loans, too, uh, to Ukraine. Thanks so much, Kellyanne. Appreciate it. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.